Hey everybody, this is Blake here, and welcome to another episode of Review Memoirs. Today we're going to be talking about my review of To Boldly Flee. Now because certain people are too stupid to understand this, this is not the actual review of To Boldly Flee. If you would like to watch that review, and you know you do, please check the link in my description. This is just, you know, behind the scenes trivia, maybe some deleted scenes, etc, etc. Uh, so the first thing you should know is that this is the most miserable experience I've ever had when it comes to video producing. Um, I, I did not enjoy making this at all, and it has nothing to do with the movie. Um, pretty much what you heard in the review was how I felt about the movie. I really liked parts of it, and I really disliked uh, other parts of it. But it was still overall a pretty um, positive experience. But after I was done watching the movie, I just uh, was looking at the paper and or looking at a blank screen for pretty much countless minutes. I don't want to say hours. I don't know how long it really was. But I, I just couldn't uh, think of a way to crystallize my thoughts into words. And I, I spent so much time just, you know, I'd start it. But then I wouldn't like it, it just wouldn't flow nicely, so I'd scrap it and start all over again. And um, eventually I got desperate because it was taking more time than I thought it, I, I, it would be, uh, than I thought it would. So I uh, went back and I watched the movie from part one to part four. And um, then I started it all over again. But then the same problem happened. I couldn't, I couldn't think of a way to compile all my thoughts. So I watched... And I wasn't planning on stopping at part four, but by then I thought I could finally do it. So I watched one through four again. And um, this time I finally started getting stuff uh, together. I wrote um, a few drafts of what would have been the first video of the review, which was totally different from what we would ultimately get. And I'll explain why soon. But then I went and I started uh, compiling the script for the second video. And it just once again, I, I could not think of anything to say. So what was the original review going to look like? Well, part um, I was hoping I'd have a three-episode review, but I knew that wasn't going to happen. It would probably for like, uh, well, even the last video, I think, was ultimately four videos. But um, the first one would be dedicated to, to Boldly Flee's script. I'd explain um, the issues I had with the plot, the things I liked about the story, pretty much everything that you do see in the final product of my first video uh, is there, but then it, I, that meant that most of the video was me bitching. Bitching. And then I'd come out at the very end and point out the things that I liked, and I'd praise the script as a whole for at least being ambitious and having some really good moments. The thing is, I really don't like doing that. Unless you're going to utilize it in a way that's funny or clever, um, I think it's actually really cheap when you review something that you actually like, but you spend the bulk of the video bitching about it only to come back at the very end and say, oh, but I, I liked it as a whole. I thought the Nostalgia Critics Conan the Barbarian review was one of his worst for that reason. And then other people can get away with it, like, um, you know, with the snob, since he's playing a character, it makes more sense. And it's not like the snob goes back on his uh, claims. It's Brad who really likes the movie. So, uh, but I couldn't think of a way to do that in a way, uh, I couldn't think of a way to do that to where it would be funny or clever. So I just felt that was a, a bad way to start things. And then um, the second video would be about the direction, the production values, etc. In fact, I have one little part here that I'm going to read, and this is what, how the video would have started. Welcome, to, welcome back to my super pretentious review of To Boldly Flee, where now we shall talk about the direction, production values, pacing, casting couch repercussions, poor CR, and homoeroticism. Um, uh, this would be sort of a theme I'd come back to for the final product, but... Uh, I just couldn't think of anything else to say beyond that. Now, I want to be a screenwriter in uh, you know, real life, outside of video reviewing, so I've done screenwriting classes, so that's why I'm probably much better when it comes to dissecting the scripts and movies, but I'm not really familiar with uh, you know, the technical aspects. I don't know about um, cameras, uh, very little about editing and stuff like that, so I just couldn't think of a whole lot to say other than um, the special effects are good for, uh, uh, when it comes to video reviewing standards, but obviously aren't on par with you know big blockbuster productions. Uh, so I never could really fill that out. Then the third video would have been um, about the reviewers, and it probably would have been 
two videos based on the reviewers because there are so many of them. And I wanted to say uh, more about them than I did in the previous episode. So uh, I ended up watching it again. And um, then I kind of realized, you know, maybe this would have been better if I maybe reviewed it in part, like uh, one episode at a time. So I'd review the first episode and the second episode and the third episode, but maybe I'd condense those into one video. And uh, so hopefully as a whole, it would be no more than four videos. And I consider that actually pretty early on, but I felt it was too late. It would have been better maybe if uh, while they were releasing the episodes, I was doing that. But I decided, you know, why not, you know, try. Write a draft, write uh, just the first uh, part one of To Boldly Flee. And if I could fit any more, maybe uh, add in part two. But then talk about some of the reviewers at the end. And it would balance everything out much more nicely. So I did that, and I liked it a lot more. It just felt more natural. uh, And, uh, you know, I I felt like I could say everything I wanted to say. But it wouldn't be so lopsided. Uh... So that's how I ultimately decided to do it. And I'm, but during the filming of part one of my review, it was just a miserable experience. I couldn't get any of my lines right. Whenever I was on the screen, you can guarantee that I probably flubbed something. Uh, I, I, even the scenes though where I was um, just doing a voiceover, I couldn't get it right. I kept stumbling over my words, and I was becoming so frustrated that. You know, in the first two hours of filming, I barely got anything done. So uh, you could tell in that video how bland I sound. That's just because I had no energy. I couldn't um, put my enthusiasm in any of my lines. So I'm just kind of reading off the script. Uh, but when I was finally done, I was like, oh, thank God. That was that sucked. Hopefully the second one won't be as bad. So uh, I didn't want to do a single video per episode either. Um, so I condensed, I believe, two, three, and four. I don't remember if I did five, but I condensed all that, and I was happy because I felt I was being much more positive, but at the same time, I wasn't being a total fanboy. I was criticizing what I felt needed to be criticized, but at the same time, um, you know, I don't like how various detractors go too far with it. You feel that they hate to boldly flee just because they hate that guy with the glasses, and, um, I wanted to give it a real review because I do still enjoy the website, even if I'm no longer the raving fanboy I used to be. Uh, So that went a lot easier, but it was still not the easiest kind of shoot. And uh, I talked about more reviewers. And then I think at that point is when I got the Cinema Snob movie in the mail. And I was like, shit, I'm going to have to do this right after this Tiboldi Flea review. When will I ever get back to the normal Critiquing the Critics season? So uh, with part three, I got an idea. Why not um, just rehearse the script before actually filming? You'd think that would be obvious, but I usually don't do that kind of stuff. So I just said all my lines aloud to myself. And whenever I'd stumble or have difficulty pronouncing certain words, um, it's not that I can't pronounce them. It's just where they're placed in a sentence, sometimes they just don't sound right for me. Uh, I would reword them in a way that I could say much easier. And that actually ended up being the easiest uh, shoot of this whole review. Um, It didn't seem like it took as long. I went through the clips much easier. Uh, My jokes, I thought, were a little bit better. So that was a much happier experience. Part four, which was always intended to be the shortest, actually made me nervous because... It seemed like I spent a lot more time critiquing the performances, which I felt I should because it's, you know, the last time we'll see Spoonie in one of these events, and it's the last time we'll see the Nostalgia Critic. Well, probably not the last time, but, you know, it, this was his uh, swan song. This was his final moment. So I figured those two guys should be in the very last. And um, I spent more time critiquing their performances and I was worried, though, that I'd spent too much time, but I thought it came together really well. And, uh, you know, even though it was still pretty stressful to make, it, it wasn't that bad. And I thought it was a good way to end things. Uh, one thing I was planning on doing, but I changed my mind, was I kept forgetting about Mars Girl. And uh, I was considering having her, that whole thing, like, oh, should I bring out Mars Girl in the very last video? And it'll be just kind of funny because it's so random. Why would Mars Girl be put with Spoonie and the Nostalgia Critic since obviously this isn't her last performance, as far as I know. But uh, I figured I'd just go ahead and add that to the third one. And um, so that's how that came to be. 
Now, uh, certain running gags I think people, not everybody liked was the whole homoeroticism thing. I really didn't notice a lot of that during my first viewing of To Boldly Flee. It wasn't until I would go through it over and over again that I started noticing all these certain things that, uh, and it's not a big deal, whether it's in- intentional or not. I just thought I'd, I'd be a good way to throw in a joke. Uh, and I, I make it even more so on my website where I'm talking about, you know, does Film Brain finally win the critic's heart? That would be the description of my review of that episode. And um, that was a lot of fun to do. I actually really enjoyed that. But, you know, as a whole, like I said, this was not an easy series of videos to make. I've never done anything this long before. Even when I did, a, you know, four-part reviews, you know, the episodes weren't more than five minutes, I think, whereas this one, they were almost all past the 10 minute mark. So hopefully the Cinema Snob review won't be this stressful because it's already looking like it's going to be really long, but I don't want to do it in multiple parts. So we'll just have to see. Uh, My intention for that is, it's like currently about four pages long, the script to that review. If I have to do multiple parts, I'd like to release them at the same time because at least with To Boldly Flee, I had a, an end, you know, each video ended. Uh, I had a planned ending for each of those videos. Whereas if I did that with the Cinema Snob review, um, it would just stop. It wouldn't really end. So uh, we'll just have to see how that turns out. And, um, you know, as a whole, I think the review of To Boldly Flee turned out fine. It just, uh, I just didn't enjoy making it. So that's all I have to say. If you'd like to read all my many different drafts of scripts, Please check the links in my description. I have a bunch of that kind of shit. Oh yeah, there was one deleted scene. Um, I didn't film it, but it would be uh, in the last video where I point out how awkward it is seeing the you know Spoonie initially missing at the very end, and then he shows up and everybody gives him a group hug. And then I'd point, I'd, I'd kind of lampoon that, was saying, I presume that's before they all tore him into pieces or something crazy and disturbing like that. I was going to reference Cannibal Holocaust. Uh, but it just didn't seem very funny, and it doesn't even seem funny now. So I decided just to cut that all all, all, to, all together. And plus, I didn't like spoiling anything. I didn't really want to give any heavy spoilers, uh, even though I reveal the nostalgia critic more or less dies. Whoops. Uh, so that is that. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys later.